Alrighty, hello, good afternoon, good evening everybody. My name is Anthony DeSimone with his newest edition of Penguin's Pointers. It's been a while. It's been wild. It's been a lot of playoff hockey. And let's jump right in there and let's get some conversation going about what's going on with the Penguins here in the second round against the Washington Capitals. Well, first and foremost, I'll address the idea of Lentang's suspension. I'm fine with the league's decision to suspend him for one. I was expecting a second game suspension, but they only gave him one. Personally, I was at game three and saw the hit, you know, live in person in the arena. And I can tell you the vibe in the arena was a lot of fans were not happy with Latang's that with his decision to go ahead and put a hit down like that and leave his feet. Um, it's just it's one of those that you just got your opponent caught doing it and got a big one of their players suspended because of it, and the Penguins come out and do the same thing. And you know, just Latang has had a lot better of a season in terms of how he handles himself on the ice, and I give Mike Sullivan credit to that. But this is going back to the fact that Latang is still a little bit of a rough and rowdy player, and I'm fine with the suspension. But And I think he got what he deserved going into the rest of the game with uh, the Capitals targeting him for the rest of this uh, game three. But, um, yeah, it's just that kind of hit is not Penguins hockey. And Sullivan says it all the time. We're not going to beat you with our strength. We're going to beat you with our speed. And I just didn't understand why Latang would do that after two nights ago one of his players was injured in a similar incident where you hit somebody that hard. It's just, I understand it's the Washington Capitals, but you still have to understand that underneath that jersey and that helmet is another human being. And do you really want to cause such harm to a player that they can have an injury where they might have to be carted off the ice? I just, I don't understand why. He thought that hit was necessary considering the play had just gone beneath his feet and he, the player was covered by two Penguin defenders anyway. So I'm fine with the league's decision. I'm not happy with Latang to be honest. Um, and uh, it's going to take probably me a while to get over that one. But anyway, let's move down to a little bit of some positive stuff here. Goaltending situation. Mark andre Fleury skated and dressed for warm-ups. In Game 3, most likely he will maintain the backup role now as Matt Murray has been stellar. Stopped 47 of 49 in Game 2 to help the Penguins to a 3-2 victory. This is definitely a goaltender that is having a heck of a rookie playoff run. I'll give him that. But it's nice to have Flurry on the bench dressed and ready to go. Um, and it's just because statistically at some point, they're going to get to Murray, and they're going to beat him. And that's when you need to say, you know, let's let you sit out for a second, gather yourself. We're going to put Mark andre in and um, go from there. So I'm glad to see that they'll have two goaltenders back. I can tell you from watching Fleury in the warm-ups, he might have said post-game that he felt good. He wasn't all there. There were a couple times where he almost fell over skating around. Um I've seen him in warm-ups before, and he just didn't seem as energized, and that's probably because he was assuming the backup role, but that could also be some lingering effects of the concussion. So, but, <clears throat> like I said, it's nice to see that both of the Penguins' top two goaltenders this season are back and ready on call, should they need them. So, Murray's been playing stellar. I hope they leave Murray in. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if the Penguins go all the way and win the Stanley Cup, this is Matt Murray's Stanley Cup. Um, because In terms of goaltending, not in terms of the team overall, but Matt Murray deserves to be in that if the team is going to win the Stanley Cup because he has really carried them through the Rangers and is carrying them through the first three games so far against the Capitals. So in terms of goaltending, it's glad to see both of them are back. We'll see what happens from there. On to some more bad news. The power play woes are back, everybody. We <laughs> They looked really good against the Rangers with the power play. They've now entered this series with the Capitals 0 for 11. They've had 11 chances in three games. That is way more than you usually get. And they have not converted. They've come close. They've looked good. But the Penguins just cannot get anything past the defense or Braden Holpe, for that matter, in regards to when they have the man advantage. So... That needs to change if they honestly are going to win this series. I don't think the Penguins, if they don't score a power play goal, I guarantee you they won't win this series. They're going to need one because that's just, the Capitals have had a strong power play through the regular season. 
The Penguins have done a fantastic job of keeping them quiet so far in the series, and that's kudos to Matt Murray and the defensive unit. But now they're going to be down Chris Letang. So you see how that plays into the factor. Now, I mean, everybody is a unit. That whole bench is playing fantastic defense. You even see the forwards pinching down in the defensive zone to block shots like Brian Rust, who was injured by that by the, by his hit to the lower body, by the way. So I doubt he'll be in for Game 4 tonight. But... Um, it's glad to, it's good to see that all the players are helping out on the defensive end and making Murray's job a little bit easier, even though he's facing you know 30, 40 shots. There's a couple that didn't get on net, so that's good for them. But the power play's got to get better. They got to convert. I mean, it starts with one. It starts with getting one power play, and they can figure it out and go from there. I just feel like the drop back passes in the neutral zone aren't working to try to pull the Capitals out because they're just recessing into the defensive zone and waiting and letting the Penguins get in, and then they're keeping the play to the boards. And that's what the Capitals did when they beat the Flyers. They kept the Flyers to the boards on the power play and would not let players like Patrick Hornquist for the Penguins get into the nitty-gritty area where they can get that deflection in or that tip in or the dirty goal cleanup. They just won't let you in there. So, and that's, you know, you get the entrance zone and then you're stuck to taking a slap shot from the point, which usually ends up getting blocked by the Capitals and thrown out. So, that's that's what I'm seeing with the power play. If they're going to want to get that to change, they're going to have to do stuff like they did with um, the Eric Fair goal in Game 2 with Malkin, where four Capitals were drawn into Malkin in the corner boards trying to steal the puck, and Eric Fair came streamlining through the slot wide open. They have to try plays like that where they draw the attention in on the boards as if they're going to lose the puck so that the defensive unit of the Capitals pinches down to try to steal the puck and they open the slot zone up for a uh, no-look pass, if you will. So that's the only thing I could think of to honestly remedy the power play right now. The Capitals just have a really good penalty kill unit, as do the Penguins, so it's not really saying that anybody's power play is bad in this series. It's just the penalty kills are phenomenal on both sides, so... You're not going to see a lot of power play goals. Speaking of goals, Crosby is due. Ovechkin got his goal in Game 3. Uh, Crosby has been kept off the goal sheet so far. Hopefully he can get a goal in either Game 4 or Game 5. That would be a great uh, confidence boost to him as if he doesn't need any more confidence boost because he's a great player, but um, that would be great for him to get on the score sheet against one of the teams that he does not like and against one of the players that are on that team that he does not like. So it would be nice to see Crosby do for a goal. So far, though, the middle and bottom line forwards have been doing their job in goal production, and it's great to see that. But we'd like to see you know Malkin and Crosby get on that goal sheet every, uh, every once in a while as well. So hopefully Crosby might get a goal tonight in Game 4. And here, I want to talk about this. There's two predictions I have with this. Now, you can throw my predictions honestly out the window because I'm already out of the Stanley Cup um, running for the playoff bracket challenge because I picked the Kings, and the Kings lost in the first round. Let's see. I also didn't get the Detroit series right. I got the New York Ranger. I got the New York Islanders wrong. Um, the only ones I got right were the Penguins series against the Rangers, the Capitals against the Flyers, and the stars over the wild. I got all the other ones wrong. So you can take my predictions and think about them in your head, or you could just say, ah, he was terrible in the bracket prediction. Why am I going to listen to him now anyway? So, But here's how the Penguins will win. If the Penguins can take game four tonight, even without their top defenseman, Chris Letang, they go out to a 3-1 to series lead going back to Washington. Now, I can guarantee you they will not win Game 5 in Washington, regardless of if they win or lose this game. It's just the Washington atmosphere, they've ar- we've already got one there. We won't get another one there. Um, it's just that was a hard 2-1 to one win, and it was off a deflection into the net. And that was really hard to get that second goal, so I don't see us winning another game in Washington. If we're going to win, we got to win it in Pittsburgh. So... I see the Penguins win Game 4, will drop Game 5, and take Game 6 back in Consol Energy Center. How the Penguins will lose is the Penguins will lose Game 4, have the series be tied back up at 2 going into Washington where the Capitals will win Game 5, 
and put the stranglehold on the Penguins 3 to 2 as to where the Penguins will most likely win game 6 at home to tie the series at 3 and go to a game 7 but ultimately they will fall in Washington in game 7 so it's either the Penguins are going to get out of this in 6 with a victory or they're going to lose in 7 so hopefully the Penguins can take game 4 tonight and then just take through, you know, take some of the positives from game five, maybe keep it close. You never know. They maybe they'll pull an upset and take it four to one. But most likely they won't, and this will be a four to two series. So my two predictions on how the next couple games will pan out. Speaking of the next game, it is tonight, eight o'clock, home game. Penguins do lead the series two to one, in case you've been living under a rock. But, uh, I just want to talk about my tips to win here. Like I said earlier, the power play has got to be on point. Um, even if they get one, that's one extra goal past Braden Holpe. And I can tell you Braden Holpe was a, looking a little rattled in Game 3, um, considering he gave up two goals on the first three shots of the game. I think the Penguins are doing what they did to Henrik Lundqvist. They're doing the same thing to Braden Holpe. They are getting to him, and it is frustrating Holpe. Because Holpe is known as that goaltender that's got a 930 save percentage. He's got 48 wins in the regular season. He's this top goaltender in the NHL. And the Penguins have put up three goals in Game 1, two in Game 2, and another three in Game 3. So they're testing him, and they're getting, goal, they're getting pucks behind him. So if they can get a power play goal, that's just one extra way to chip away at Braden Holpe's confidence. So that would be one of my crucial tips to win. Two is Crosby. He's been doing great in terms of skating and setting up passes, but he needs to be on the score sheet. And I, Crosby getting a goal or two will really frustrate the Capitals because just like how the Penguins don't like Ovechkin and the Capitals, the Capitals do not like Crosby and the Penguins. And if they, Crosby can get a goal, that will really frustrate that bench. It will frustrate Braden Holpe. It will energize the crowd to see their captain get a goal against the Capitals, especially at home. So if he can get a goal, that would be great for the team's confidence, and it might even wear a little bit further down on Braden Holtfee's confidence and his play. Third is speed is greater than strength, and this is partially up there because of Latang's hit. The Penguins don't need to hit the Capitals to win. First of all, all the Capital players pretty much outweigh every single Penguin player. They're one of the heaviest teams in the NHL, whereas the Penguins are one of the lightest. So... And, and if you're fast, when he goes to check into the boards, he's just going to hit board. And I was seeing it in Game 3. Players like Sheary and Kessel and Haglin were doing it a lot. These spinny moves, these duck under the boards. And it was funny because you just watch the Capitals. They'd slam and hit their shoulder straight into the boards and miss their check because of the straight speed that the Penguins have. And if the Penguins can get this Game 4 into a track meet, where they're going up and down the ice, back and forth, trading chances. If they can wear down and tire out the Capitals as they go into the third period, that's where the Penguins will do their damage. They did it against the Rangers when they took the series in that 6-3 victory. They put them in a track meet through Game 2, scored five goals, went up 6-1, to one, and at the third period, yeah, the Rangers might have got two goals, but they were gassed. They were exhausted from the second period, and their morale was crushed because the Penguins had gone up by so many goals that it was just almost like, all right, there's no way this is going to happen. So take away from, you know, they're not hitting them as much, but don't make the emphasis to make that big, nasty hit like Latang did. Just skate around them, take the puck the other way, because at the end of the day, what really matters is who's got more goals on the board. You can out-hit your opponent 70-1, to 1, but at the goal sheet, if, if you got one more than he does, it doesn't matter how many times he hits you. You're going to be bumped and bruised, but... Um, you're still going to get the win, and that's honestly what matters here in this series. So, and um, just the last one that I think I might uh, add on there is an additional one. Is um, you know, give give credit to Murray. Just as an overall, give give credit to Matt Murray. He has done phenomenal as a rookie, and um, he has really kept the Penguins' goaltending stellar. Zakoff did his contribution, and then when Murray was back in net, it's just it's frustrating other teams, and you can see it. 
to see how well a rookie goaltender is doing. And I'm sure that is getting into the head of Holpe down the other end. That a rookie goaltender is toe-to-toe with a stellar goaltender that is probably going to win um, the award for the best goaltender of the year. But it's just to see that is incredible and I think fans need to take a second to appreciate just how well Matt Murray is playing all Penguin fans are used to Marc-Andre Fleury making those saves and when you look down there and it's not a 29 in the net it's a 30 and you go my god a 21 year old just stumped Ovechkin twice in one game you have to just sit there and be drawn back by the fact that this this player was playing in the minor league a few months ago playing well of course but playing down in the minor league who would have thought that he would be the flagship goaltender for the Pittsburgh Penguins who are going to have a decent run at the Stanley Cup this year. So just just let that sink in while uh, I wrap up my podcast here. And I'll leave you with that thought. Just think about what Murray is doing in that and how uncanny it is to see a goaltender that is a rookie, 21-year-old. He's 21. He's one year younger than me. And he's making these kind of saves and keeping the Penguins in the playoffs. Just think about that. But anyway, I'm done. Uh, Hopefully you guys will be able to check out Game 4 tonight. Rooting for the Penguins. Hopefully they can get that win and put a stranglehold on this series and take down the uh, Goliath Washington Capitals, either in 5 or 6. So... But time will only tell. I want to thank you guys for listening in. If you haven't already done so, like and subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you guys next time. Take care.